All right, let's calculate some more derivatives. Let us evaluate h prime of 4 using the first version of the definition of the derivative. So I'm going to write the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x. Well, it's named h of x, but the idea is that I just write what the rule for the function is. So there goes x over x minus 1 minus f of a, or in this case, h of 4. So that's going to be a 4 over a 4 minus 1. And meanwhile, down here in the denominator, I'm going to have an x minus 4. So I need to evaluate I need to evaluate this limit, and that means I'm going to have to do a lot of sort of algebra and manipulating here. So I got an x over x minus 1 minus a 4 over a 3, and I got to figure out, well, what am I going to do with all of that stuff? And the answer is, let's ignore that denominator of x minus 4 for a second. I got two terms in the numerator. Let's give them a common denominator and combine them. So what is a good common denominator to use? Well, I'm going to need to find a common denominator of 3 times x minus 1. So I'm going to have to multiply each individual little fraction in there by the appropriate thing in the numerator and the denominator to achieve my desired common denominator of 3 times x minus 1. So I'm going to get a 3x over a 3x over a 3 times x minus 1, and then I'm subtracting a 4 times x minus 1 over a 3 times x minus 1. Now, of course, this is all in the big picture over x minus 4, and of course, eventually we're going to take a limit as x approaches 4, but not for a while still, because now I need to combine these like terms up there in the numerator, because they have the same denominator, 3 times x minus 1. So I got a 3x, and now I'm taking away 4 times x minus 1. So I'm going to have to do some distributing and some combining of like terms in a little bit. So I've got the limit as x approaches 4 of, okay, 3 times x minus 1. I got a 3x. I'm subtracting a 4x. I got a plus 4. And meanwhile, that is all over x minus 4. So now what? Limit as x approaches 4 of, let's combine some like terms. Looks like I got a negative x plus 4 over 3 times x minus 1 over x minus 4. What is going to happen next? What's going to happen next is I'm going to do some factoring. That negative x plus 4, that's the same thing as negative 1 times x minus 4. Uh, distribute that negative 1 back in. You'll see that I'm telling you the truth, and this is all over x minus 4. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches 4 of, hey, so remember that when you're dividing one fraction by another fraction or something like that, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So what I mean is I can rewrite what I've got going on as this which is great news because now I see that there's this common factor of x minus 4 that is going to get eliminated, and then I'm going to be left with the limit as x approaches 4 of negative 1 over 3 times x minus 1. Now I can plug in a 4 for x, uh, and I'm going to get a negative 1 over 3 times a 3. So in other words, I'm going to get a negative 1 ninth. So that is the value of the derivative there. Now I'm going to circle back and do it using the other form of the definition of the derivative. All right, so let's do this. I am going to write limit as h approaches 0. I'm going to draw myself a big fraction bar. I'm dividing by h. What do I put in my numerator? f of a plus h. This is a little bit confusing because my function is named lowercase h. Let's not stress out about that and just think about how in the definition, f of a plus h is what you get when you plug in a plus h everywhere that there is an x. So I'm going to write a 4 plus h. I'm going to write 4 plus h over 4 plus h minus 1 minus 4 over 4 minus 1. And remember that that's all over h. So I've got my f of a plus h there on the left. I've got my f of a there on the right. Now I'm going to start evaluating this limit. But of course, to evaluate this limit, i got to do a whole lot of algebra. Let's just do a tiny, tiny little bit of simplifying here just to make it clear what are my denominators. Okay. So I got the limit as h approaches 0 of, what am I going to do? 
I'm going to give my things a common denominator. So I'm going to have 4 plus h times 3 over 3 plus h times 3 minus 4 times 3 plus h over 3 times 3 plus h. And this is all over h. So what did I just do? Maybe I should have written this bit ahead of time. Uh, but I need to multiply those dudes by 3 to accomplish my desired common denominator of 3 plus h times 3. And I got to multiply this guy by 3 plus h over 3 plus h to accomplish that desired common denominator. Now I got to do some, now I got to do some more math. I got to do some more simplifying. I'm ready for lunch, but I got to keep working on this problem. So I'm taking the limit as h approaches 0 of. Well, I have this common denominator of 3 times 3 plus h. But what else is going on up here? 12 plus 3h. I wish I had left myself more room. Uh, minus a 12 minus a 4h, and this is all over an h. So this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of, after a little bit more simplifying, negative h over 3 times 3 plus h, and that's all over h. So this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of negative h over 3 times 3 plus h times 1 over h. Well, would you look at that? Those common factors of h eliminate each other, and I get a negative 1 over 3 plus 3 plus h. And as h goes to 0, this is going to be negative 1 over 3 times 3, or in other words, it's going to be negative 1 ninth.